Tonight on Space Cadets, we attempt to launch Paul, Billy, Kerry and actor Charlie into space. In this shuttle. Welcome to Space Cadets. It's a nice night for a shuttle launch, I think you'll agree. Yep, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. MC Hammer had his hammer time. Chico sadly had his Chico time. Well, let me tell you, this is shuttle time. The moment when all systems are go and we attempt to launch four space cadets into orbit. These intrepid pioneers of non-interplanetary travel are Billy, a recruitment consultant. Kerry, a college administrator. Paul, a plasterer and an undercover actor named Charlie who is perhaps using Earth's worst ever cover story by masquerading as a poet. All the graduates of the fictional space facility STAR, the Space Tourism Agency of Russia, and they've all undergone an intensive three-week training course. Now, this evening, they will be boarding Earth Orbiter 1 and doing what one tends to do in an orbiter, orbit. But will they rumble the ruse? Put yourselves in their shoes. After all they've been through, it would actually be weird for them to question the whole thing. But back to the launch. Over the last three weeks, their expectations of space travel have been altered. Not just by chucking Newton's universal law of gravitation out the classroom window, but by telling them such things as, you only need to train for three weeks to go into space, or they won't be taking off vertically, and there'll be gravity machines on board keeping them stuck to the floor. Crucial to the success of the mission will be the performance of the shuttle simulator, Earth Orbiter 1, the construction of which, I can assure you, has been quite a performance in itself. Welcome to the special effects world of Brick Price, where imagination and technology come together to create amazing things. Brick Price, one of Hollywood's top special effects directors, has been given the job of building a space shuttle interior capable of convincing our space cadets they're blasting into space. He has a set that has been used in the film Space Cowboys and Apollo 13. But how's he going to make it move around and feel like a real shuttle? Together with his team of engineers and hydraulics experts, they come up with the idea of placing huge airbags on each corner of the shuttle's base. The airbags are considerably bigger of necessity on this. They have to. They, they came from a um, Greyhound bus type of a thing. But right now, without the shocks, if you start to rock it a little okay. bit, it just oscillates. Okay. When compressed air is forced into the airbags, they'll expand, causing the entire 42-foot shuttle to move around. By adjusting the pressure of the air, the movement can be gentle like the swaying of a boat on water. Or intense, similar to severe turbulence on a passenger aircraft. <laughs> After only a about a half an hour, I find that I, I need to get my land legs back. So it moves realistically enough during normal flight. But how can they make the cadets feel like they're experiencing the launch they're expecting? Remember, we've told them the shuttle will take off like a conventional aircraft and gently corkscrew into space. On the launch, we have a hydraulic ram which lifts up the cockpit area because the only time that, that you're going to feel that acceleration is when you first take off. <laughs> Wow. Part of the job is to trick the cadets' senses. The hydraulics on the front of the craft will push them back into their seats, mimicking G-force, and hopefully make them feel they're accelerating away from the Earth. Gives you that sense of acceleration because you're pushed into the seat back. And uh, when you couple that with movement, it is terrifying. So it looks real and feels real, but one vital piece of the puzzle still remains to be completed. It needs to sound real. And something very important is the sound of the, the launch, of the noises that are running when you're going through space. It has to be believable. It has to be believable for a long period of time. So I wanted to get the best person I could, and that would be Dean Andre. Enter Hollywood's legendary sound designer, Dean Andre. I'm the guy who puts the squeak in the doors and the squeaks in the floors. Oh, that's great. This is one of my favorite sounds on the entire planet. Let's see if we can use it. That'd be a gas, huh? Yeah. 
We're bringing in some new technology, sound technology called ambient sound. We're able to move sound up and down and right over the top of a person's head. So we'll be able to accomplish this right inside the space shuttle. It's the very first time anyone's had it. Steven Spielberg doesn't have it, James Cameron. No one has it, but we have it right here. The 20 channels of sound are pumped through 40 speakers hidden within the walls and ceilings of the shuttle. This is the equivalent of taking a nightclub sound system and putting it in your bathroom at home. I thought, well, we have to think to the shuttle launch what that actually sounded like, and there are samples in there from an actual shuttle. We also have F-14 fighter uh, engines in there. We have a combination of probably 15 to 20 different aircraft in there, plus explosions from a howitzer, a World War II howitzer, that <laughs> ignites the actual boosters as the shuttle is taking off. For the launch, Dean creates a sound that will physically vibrate throughout the shuttle and hopefully help convince our cadets that they are moving. It's going down the runway, and then when the, when the, uh, the main rockets kick in, the main rockets kick in right about over here. Here we're taking off, we're taking off, and the rockets kick in, and boom. And now the, the, the simulator is trying to go up like this. But what will our cadets be hearing throughout their days in space? I don't know if many people know this, but space sounds like absolutely nothing. Because of the fact there is no atmosphere, sound cannot travel through nothing. It needs atmosphere. So because of the Hollywood factor, we need to uh, fool these people into believing that they're really someplace that they're not. And we've added ambience to the ship. We've added a little bit of fan noise, a little bit of uh, rotten. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> the cadets' orbit around the Earth will not always be smooth space sailing they'll encounter various events along the way. It's Dean's job to make sure that every event has a realistic sound to match. One of the segments in this particular program is to create a meteor shower. So I'm thinking, how would we make the sound of a meteor shower to hit hitting a space shuttle? Dog food <laughs> and cat food. I'm putting a mic inside the van here. Here we go. My neighbors think that I'm crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to put this together. Let's go back to the studio. We have to process this one. All we need is about half a second. OK, so we're going to learn that. It sound like little bits and pieces of meteor like they're clunking against the shell of the hull. So everything is set. Because none of our cadets have prior experience of spaceflight, they've nothing to compare the experience with. If it feels and sounds realistic, then hopefully they'll believe they're actually heading for space and orbiting the Earth. With everything in place, it's time for our boffins to strap themselves in and test the simulator. Two minus two and counting. We need to get on board. Yeah, roger that. Help your dad in, will you? I gotta tell you something, this adds a whole new sense of reality just having these headphones on. With the jack stands removed, we can uh, proceed to test. Good to go. Roger that. Up to 10 degrees on the hydraulics and rock and roll a bit. Actually feeling like you're taking off. Ah, oh, this is impressive. What do you want to go for? Rock and roll motion or uh, four and a half? Shake it up when it's in its right position. Roger that. It's impressed the experts. All it has to do now is convince the cadets. <laughs> How you like that, Dean Andre?